talk about the VOD and the silver screen. Kevin and Tom and Joe know all there is to know. From masterpieces to deep fried tacos. And if the movie sucks, you might hear them say, There's no telling where the guys will take you. Get ready for a spoiler. Won't say it twice, cause we're already. Broadcasting from the Lush But Not Lavish studios located in the basement of the O'Keefe Institute for Advanced Film Snarkitude, this is Real Spoilers, episode 807, Alien Romuli. Alien 12 <laughs> or whatever. Whatever. Who knows? Whatever they're on. Do we count the aliens versus Predator? Uh, you I, can. I never, you know, in all the rankings coming out recently, people are, and I go, oh, I would have never thought to put those in the, like, official it's, rankings. I, I, so they include Freddy versus Jason in both franchises? Yeah, I guess they well, are technically, sense, but, but, like... But Alien, I, you could include Alien and Predator in I guess both they franchises. are, but I, I never I feel like you don't that. need to include them in a ranking because everybody knows they're the last two. Right. It's just oh, a, sure, right. Sure, sure. Right. <laughs> like, well, but every like, even if you know nothing about Alien, you know that those that two movies. Well, AV, AVP two is the lowest. They're, I would watch AVP one over Alien Resurrection any day of the week. Okay. Interesting. I've, yeah, I've seen okay. Of them, oh but, boy. So anyway, let's go around the table and everyone can introduce themselves. This is Joe. This is Kevin. And this is Tom. And joining us today via the magic of ZoomTube is David Rosen from the Peace Knit Together podcast. Hey, David, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me, you guys. Yeah, welcome back. It's been a minute. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's been a while. We can't even remember what the last time was. Was it like a Godzilla movie I've or something? I've been here before, but I don't know what it was. So. Yeah, it's been hundreds of episodes. That's probably. the story of my life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been he here was, before, but I don't remember why. He was here when we like did our crawl episode. <laughs> yeah. That's how long ago it was. I've been, we've recorded so many episodes, over 800 now, that seriously, I am having trouble remembering which ones I've been on. because We it's know. Like, so we like, no, we did that. We did that one. But Kevin. seriously, like, no, episode 100 or 200, I mean, we're talking over a decade. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. it's hard to, rem- I don't know, for me at it's least. It's funny when there are movies I don't remember having seen, but we've recorded episodes sure. for them. I'm, like, I've, I've had talk- that happen to me, too. Yeah, like, yeah. I've talked about this movie for an hour, and I have no <laughs> record. Yeah. Like, you you spend more time energy thinking about talking about it yeah. than the actual movie. Yeah, there's yeah. been a few of those <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So uh, uh, before we dig in, shameless plugs. Don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, TuneIn, wherever you find a podcast. You could find us while you're there. Be sure and follow us so you never miss an episode. Maybe leave us a review. That's super helpful and greatly appreciated. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Real spoilers while you're there. Like the page. Join the group. It is called the League of Show Sharers because we are hoping you will share an episode. People who were kind enough to share an episode last week include Librarian Cynthia, Tammy Lynn Powers, Betts, Jeff Wildman, uh, Brendan McGuckin, Ralph Tribble, Tom Dowdy, Chris Falls, Travis Tewitt, Julianne Jordan, Richard Crotcher, Chris Magic Man, Gabriel Lugo, Taylor Ward, Brent Smith, Heather Sachs, Edit Photo Gamer, David Rojas, Colby Mack, Spoiler Piece Theater, Mike Mike and Oscar, Nostalgia Cast, Ronnie, Ryan Terry, Ronnie Castle, Binge Movies, Geek to Me Radio, Matt Niglia, and In Session Film. So thank you very much. We definitely appreciate you guys sharing an episode, helping us get the word out there. If you love the show and you want to support it, we want you to. And even if you don't love the show and you don't want to support it, we still want you to. Yeah, correct. Just correct. to be clear. What if you don't love the show, but you want to support it? That's That we would also love that. Okay. Whatever yeah. gets us your $5. Five dollars. So for five bucks a month over at patreon.com slash real spoilers, you can get all sorts of bonus content. Extra Matt Bassler. Yeah. And we like you extra. So uh, anyway. Oh, and YouTube. You can watch all these over on YouTube. At YouTube.com slash at Ambersand <laughs> in yay. Real spoilers. So there's all that. Un lot. Let's dig in to Alien versus nope. no. Romulus. Yes. Hey, or this Remus. is the one I thought you'd get right on the second time. You messed up the second one? Jeez. If that's I like to keep it fresh. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. 807 like... episodes. That's when we start changing things up. Yeah, we already changed the format completely. <laughs> We've sure. already done that seven times, 12. <laughs> We're a book club now. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is an interesting franchise. I think they come out swinging for the fences and hit two grand slams 
back to back, and then have been milking it yes. for forty yes. years. Well, yes, but here's, I agree with here's you the 100%. thing, though. But but they created such a great world of of Alien. Like Ridley Scott created this great idea with a lot to say and cool practical effects and all this stuff. And I think going to this world for different stories. I mean, you've got hundreds of years in between yeah. the movies that we've seen, and this movie is a spinoff. This is like a Hobbs and Shaw. This is kind in between of, yeah. Alien and Aliens with a different crew, right? So, like, you can tell alien stories without... Because the thing is, you, you try to get the original people back, I or think, they're too I, old. It just I think doesn't... Sigourney Weaver had some sort of creative control. I yeah. think, like, they they I, couldn't do it, an alien movie without her. Well, I think they felt like they it just wouldn't have a box office appeal, and then yeah. they had to, like, back up a truck full <laughs> they, of money. Then they killed her. The th- Spoilers. Yeah. They kill her in the third one, and then they're like, uh... We want to make another one. Yeah, you're a clone now. And I, like yeah, and I, I think like the deeper it gets, the more uh, creative control she has because yeah, yeah. They, right. they need they realize that she's really the only recognizable Box face yeah. sure. of the franchise. Yeah, I it's think actually, the fun thing about this franchise is that every time out we get different voices, different directors and sure, writers sure. that are like putting their spin on it and. When it comes back to Ridley Scott and he gets to like kind of like dig further into it, it just gets weirder and weirder. And that's why I really love the prequels so much. I I love Prometheus. I'm not a big fan of Covenant, but I love Prometheus. I just rewatched. So I watched Alien and then Bella and I watched Aliens and she was like, that's the scariest thing I've ever seen. She thinks Aliens is scarier Mm, than Alien. so. So she didn't watch Alien. Okay, because I was like, maybe that's I even said that's a little too much. But pro- I like so I rewatched those two. There's actually a very funny part in Aliens where you see the chest burster for the first time, mm-hmm. and Bella turns her head, and I I said to her, "I'll tell you when it's over." She thought I said it's over, <laughs> and she turned and looked at it, and like as it's bu- bursting out of this person's chest, and she looked at me and she goes, "You lying bitch." And I was like, that. <laughs> she I said can- that. Yeah, yeah. So like just the look on her face. She's like, "I can't believe you let me look at that." But I, so I just rewatched those those two, and then I did watch Prometheus, and I remember feeling kind of indifferent about that. But after this rewatch, I was like, "Oh, that is kind of a good movie." Like it's Prometheus, pre- yeah, it's I love good. Prometheus. It's I think it's good. so freaking good. It's and great. and we talk about movies that are like backdoor sequels or prequels. We How talked about with Cloverfield. Like a, you think that's a backdoor. Well, when we didn't know out, that it was, it was an alien movie, imaged as an alien movie, and then you get oh, in the right? theater, you see at the end you, when you get to the end, they're movie. like, "Surprise!" It's oh, a xenomorph and like, like Cloverfield does. It's the same. Yeah, like okay. I or love split. it. Split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right with the Unbreakable tie-in. Right. So like, I love it when movies do that. But yeah, Prometheus is weird and it explores new things, but it manages to tie it in. Covenant, I have not seen since. I it's think fine. Review, uh, I it's, did not I mean, like it's, it. It's nothing. It's not reinventing the wheel. Yeah. Like, it's just an alien movie. Well, to well, talk about Co- not Covenant reinventing the wheel. Covenant is great. I will be the defender of Covenant okay. on this podcast. <laughs> That's uh, his number because, one, right? Because it takes the <laughs> insane sci-fi ideas of Prometheus and runs with them. And I think Ridley Scott crafted between those two movies, and hopefully he gets to do a third one one day, but I doubt it. But uh, the darkest, most just awful view of the universe that has ever been put on film. And I just, I love it for that. I just think it is so beautifully bleak and nihilistic. It is true. When we see what David, like, so at the end of Prometheus, for those that haven't seen it, you've got, uh, I almost said Elizabeth Salander. That's not, that's her character from, <laughs> it's Numi Rapace, but well, she plays Lizbeth Liz, Salander. Liz, Lizbeth gonna, Salander yeah. yeah. Uh, she's like, she survives. We, we know that she survives and she's your hero of that movie. <laughs> then when you see her in covenant and you're like, Oh, David, not our guest on the podcast, uh, <laughs> Michael Fassbender's android character, like, used her for, like, biological experiments. So, like, half of her jaw is gone and her stomach is ripped <laughs> open. And you're just like, holy God. That's like, the thing. The androids are not good in these movies if you've Bishop's learned good. anything. Well, okay. but Car's, um, car's good. Well, but a lot of the androids working for the company are programmed just to... Just the one that's from one. And and to bring it to Romulus, that's what's interesting. I think the most interesting part of Romulus is that we have kind of a good natured, uh, sympathetic android. Yeah, for the first yeah. Time. I thought that when when I saw him for when he finds out, well, you know, we'll just get into it. When that android finds out that he can't go to the planet where um, the girl from Civil War is going, I was yeah. like, oh, he's gonna turn. Like, there's gonna be like a flip of a switch, and it's he's gonna be the. But he only turned because they. 
changed his software. Correct. Right. It wasn't new, him. Yes. He, got a he new was SIM card. He was okay with it <laughs> until they put uh what was that? what is that actor's name? Oh, Ian Holmes. Ian yeah, Holmes yeah. like chip inside of him and Like were... you know that's not Ash, right? Yeah, it's Rook. Rook, yeah. But it's the same model as yeah, Ash yeah, from, right. from it's, one. It's like an R2 unit or yes, something how they all yes. look the same. And but... this is this is one of my complaints that's about <laughs> Well, I Look at the R2 units. Yeah. Oh. This is, we have this mold. We have these parts <laughs> laying around. We don't uh, have time to make everything look no, different. No, come on. That was one of my complaints about this movie. Is That's I was, my number one complaint. I was fine with it's having it. the number one. It's yeah. The CG on his face is awful. It's just not... Uh, people on the internet doing Tom Cruise deep fakes do a better job. Yeah. Than, why are they not hiring these YouTubers? I, I don't understand. That, because it, it takes you out of it, right? Like, mm-hmm. this movie, I had such a fun time with it. I think the special effects are great. Yes, it's a kind of a retread. It's like a soft reboot. Sort of, yeah. This is like the Force Awakens of Alien, right? You're play, playing the yeah. greatest hits. But they get to him and it's like, okay, I get wanting to do fan service, but you know what? Cast someone that looks like him or something. I'm or, just so sick of the CG. What I liked is they kind of when you see him face down, the android face down yeah. for the first time, if you've seen Alien, you know that, like, the the outfit that he's wearing, yeah. I'm like, oh, like, that's a good and Easter they don't, egg. You and you know, know when they don't his show face. his face that you're like, oh, that's him. And so he kind of, I kind of figured we were getting something. But, yeah, just they got to fix the CG yeah. if they're yeah. going to use but it. But who gets paid? for that because this actor's been dead for like four it's years it's gotta be his, his like, estate, estate right? yeah i don't know who gets paid but the estate did sign off on it but Maybe. i've been saying this all over twitter for like the last three days now but um if we're going to retread alien aliens alien 3 alien resurrection all of the alien movies in this it should have just been david they should yeah have just i totally agree like, with you right I totally if, it, agree if it's in you. the same universe i agree like i was thinking the same thing if you're gonna tie in and you need an android or a synthetic Get Michael Fassbender, who is still around. And Especially still if you're going to sign. costs a lot more money. That is also true. But, That's true. You know, he does a lot of, like, <laughs> indie stuff. I don't. Fassbender hasn't but, really been doing okay, a lot of... But when you do an indie movie, you take the pay cut because you know you're doing an <laughs> yeah. indie movie. If you're getting... You don't take the pay cut <laughs> for, for an aliens. alien sequel. <laughs> yeah. Okay, like, okay. You're like, alien sequels pay for the indie movies. Yeah, right. Right? I like, know. it's like... I'm not going to do 20th Century Fox as <laughs> solid. No. Them 20th, 20th Century Film. Yeah, but if, but if he's just, it's just, if it's just, I guess he's in it on the Nobody's videos. want to be called People of the Soil. <laughs> <laughs> I will say when, That's so good. when not Ash is on the TV screens and stuff, it's like, fine. That looks right? not, that looks because pretty good. You, you yeah. can make it look, you know, fuzzy yeah. and whatever. But uh, yeah, that I would have to say. They Max Tedroom did. They yeah. did. They absolutely yeah. did. Yeah. So it, it although took, fun, Funnily, and, if funnily, funnily, that's a word. Interesting. That was, <laughs> Max Headroom was not digital. Like that was. Yeah. No, it was like that practical. was makeup was, and yeah. all practical. Yeah. Wasn't and that to make Matt, it look like digital? Matt Fewer, Fewer, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, he's still. I mean, he was in Orphan Black. He's still out there. He was away. in Dawn of the Zack yeah. Snyder Dawn of the Dead. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Tons of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the creators of Max Headroom directed Super Mario Brothers the movie. Hell yeah. What? Oh, that's them. You the, mean the, you mean the John Leguizamo movie? Yeah, the good one. Yeah. Okay, let's. So moving on, we got to talk about aliens. Moving though. on, yeah. I just want to state so, there is no good one. Right. Go on. The, oh. I will say they. If you watch those movies, all of the androids, the Super Mario. No. Oh, sorry. Nobody watched that. Wow. Well, uh, based on <laughs> box office, that's true. I'm gonna have to say somebody. <laughs> somebody watched watch it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the androids have always been. Uh, so it was Ash in one, Bishop what, A B C D with David and this is where they flipped it like this guy was an A name and I was like well then I mean that's an easy fix just call him Ed or something but I don't know why <laughs> well, this we... is this takes place between A and B movies I guess that's true it so he takes place between point. A and B he's lowercase C that's right yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah I did I really enjoy I think Fetty Alvarez needs to be talked about a little bit yeah we should say the director of the Evil Dead reboot made this movie yeah but he also mm-hmm. he has a very interesting career I've said this on Twitter is so he Comes out of the gates with evil, the Evil Dead reboot, or I guess the remake, and that mm-hmm. is pretty much critically loved. Well, it's I a guess. reboot. A remake would be taking the same one. I guess that's true. I guess a it reboot. is a reboot. Yeah. And then he comes, follows that up with Don't Breathe, which I think we also covered on this podcast. Which uh, that, was... I cannot think of anything else but the turkey baster. When uh, it's, I mean, I it's Jane movie. Levy in the in the you know trying to. Oh, Get it's not that Scott. I can't remember it. I'm saying I, mean, I cannot. Yeah. <laughs> when I hear "Don't breathe," that is the only imagery. I'm like, <laughs> and you think he's the good guy, and you're like, "Oh no!" Oh, and he you is. know when people talk <laughs> about there aren't enough Thanksgiving movies. <laughs> <laughs> Here true. you go. That's true. Oh, then he does uh, the girl in the 
Spider's Web. Spider's Web, which is a sequel to the David Fincher Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, but they don't bring any of the actors back for well, that it's, one. Isn't that like the fourth book that he died it's, in the middle of writing? I think it's the, one of the books he didn't yeah. write. So it's not oh. really a direct sequel because yeah. the, the first book the is the first movie, and this is like the fourth yeah, book okay. or whatever. So yeah. it's like Claire Foy is Lisbeth, and then somebody else. It's not Daniel Craig <laughs> they get for Bloomquist. Um, and he was going to do the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Netflix thing. And, and he I was, was like, like, hopefully you mean the movie. Uh, yep. No, yeah, he was going to do I, the real thing. I would hate to think he's going on a killing spree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, trying to get out of the contract for doing that movie, yeah. he may have. Mm. Um, so he's done these three movies. Like, I don't think he's directed anything else besides maybe some short films. And he's built this. I believe they prefer to be called little films. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I can't say the M word either. Yeah. Was bad. Um, he's built like this very interesting level of goodwill with a certain audience. Yeah. And I mean, Evil Dead him, and Don't Breathe were solid. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. Actually, The Girl in the Spider's Web is not a bad movie. I, didn't, it's I don't just remember it being bad, different. but it's, I just thought it was kind of forgettable. And it is. The Fincher movie is so right. good, and I wish, I, I think Fincher wanted to make sequels, and they, it I didn't guess, make, it wasn't yeah. a hit. Yeah. Well, and, they and, put a bunch of money in that movie. Yeah. yeah. They well, thought they, mm -hmm. I mean, and I get why they thought it, but right. the, pedig the pedigree makes sense. But yeah. Yeah. that the the original Swedish films are really good, and I thought that Fincher did a great job with the oh, remake. Yeah. I thought it was on the level of like Let Me In and Let the Right One In. Yeah. You know, like they, it was a really solid remake. It was a really fast turnaround. I think you know, that's what I think that's what hurt it. Yeah. Is Daniel Craig was great casting in that. I love that he said I put on all that muscle for James Bond, and then when he got cast in the girl dragon tattoo they're like we need Put a you sweater to, on we need you to drop to like we need you to drop like 60 pounds and he's like <laughs> god dang it like i just got I gotta do another james bond life. yeah right <laughs> um do that thing you did with chris evans for steve rogers <laughs> can you just <laughs> like, cg yeah. it please yeah <laughs> so when he's announced that he's doing this it's like okay like you've made two really good like tension Build horror movies. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, this is a perfect combination of Evil Dead and Don't Breathe, right? You have yep. Don't Breathe, you have the sneaking around mm -hmm. and the suspense and everything. You have the gore with Evil Dead. This is the Doctor Sleep of Alien and Aliens. Yeah. Like, it's a perfect com uh, To me, I don't think it's perfect, but it's a very good combination yeah. of Alien, the tone of Alien and Aliens. I think this is one of the best Alien movies out there i think it's excellent it it, it it it's a little too much of a retread again it's like the greatest hits but i had fun seeing it in the look of this movie that's god great. this movie it looks, looks incredible it looks just like the first one like the the mm -hmm. set design and the way it's filmed the dark but detailed and of course the amazing effects it like this movie feels like your step like even though the other ones are real alien movies or whatnot, but you know what I mean? But you watch this and you're like, that is what an alien movie looks like. Yeah. The, he somehow recaptured the look. The CG perfectly. on the alien, on the, on the xenomorph, the way it moves, the way, um, you, you know, in those first two movies, it, they're people in suits or they're like animatronics. Yeah. And yeah stuff. He invented xenomorph. Correct. Yeah, that's right. David, do we know how much practical effects were used in this movie? Have you looked into that? Well, I, I don't know exactly, but I do know that, that he was insistent on using a lot of practical effects. Because it, it shows, right? Like, yeah. that's the thing is you can tell they use a lot in this movie, and that's what helps is, you know, practical effects hold up. You go back and watch yeah. those movies. I mean, oh, Joe, yeah. I mean, I know you're a huge, I you know, it. so it's like, even though those movies are older, but, like, they still stand the test of time, where all the 2000s CG crap is going to look so right. bad like, Go Go forever, back and watch... You know? Alien Resurrection, and it's yeah. like good it's a shame. Lord. It's it so, is so bad. I know it's cheaper it and quicker and all that, but I mean, you're gonna have movies that are are just gonna look awful and yeah, a decade later, right? And so this yeah. movie is another one that I think you'll watch Alien, you'll watch this one, and it will seamlessly move right into it, and it feels like it's in the same universe. <laughs> But again, yeah, I love that you can tell this a different story in the same universe, right? Yeah. And and you could keep doing that, and you don't have to get Sigourney Weaver back. You don't have to get the same people back. Like, just what is everyone else doing when this is going down? It's a huge world, right? I think that's the fun part is yeah. you can – and it, there's been comics, and there's been mm -hmm. video games. There's actually a video game that tells you what happened to Ripley's daughter. Is that Isolation? Yeah. Yeah, Alien yeah. Isolation's phenomenal. It's on sale for like $3 on Steam right now, and the Xbox Complete Collection with all the DLC and everything is $12 down from 50 so, I mean, pick that up. Yeah, it's, and it's awesome. I hear that's referenced in this movie, too, a bunch. It, well, yeah, and then the Colonial Marines, the game, the, the game yep, and there's yep. I think there's comics about that. But oh, yeah. this movie does seem to mention all of the other properties, which I thought was kind of cool. They don't mention Blade Runner, which is 
kind of in the same world. What? Blade Runner and Aliens are like that's the theory is that they okay. they go like when you see um the replicant's eyes uh-huh. like it's got like that white dot in the middle look at the replicants in these movies like it's the same the synthetic yeah like the synthetics they... they have the same like eyes there's oh. uh, i think Waylon or yutani is referenced in blade runner oh that's kind of cool i think yeah, uh, which yeah i think sense. it's one of those things where they're going to continue to make subtle references but like you know hopefully never like explicitly yes, tie them correct, together correct. <laughs> yeah i totally agree well since Blade Runner was Warner Brothers. I feel pretty confident that's oh, not that's going fair. to occur. That's totally. Right. F- I forgot about barring that, yeah. another, <laughs> another mega merger. merger. <laughs> but yes, like it's something that the director could get away with because it was nerd <laughs> stuff and people in suits weren't paying right. attention. Right. But but now uh, they're like, hey, now wait, wait, wait a, a second. second. <laughs> we have who, IP lawyers <laughs> that can t- point this stuff out to us. Who makes this movie? What studio is this? Twentieth century. Twentieth century. Twentieth century. And okay, it's just them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, they've. That's why it's so funny when the Fox merger goes through. Marvel immediately announces a Predator comic book series, an Alien comic book series, and a whole bunch of variants. Avengers covers. versus Aliens. Avengers versus that? Aliens is coming. <laughs> like it's happening by uh, Jonathan Hickman and that's great. Somebody. It's it is like, fun. They can play in these different sandboxes. Yeah, you know? I, there's a Superman comic where Superman gets a queen implanted in his chest. <laughs> okay, and he ha- like he's not on Earth, so his invulnerability isn't working. And so there's a queen that's about to burst out of Superman's chest. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the plot. So these are new characters. All I mean, new characters. other than the little tie in that we get later, like it's a new group of people. It takes place between Alien and Aliens. Yeah. So the end of Alien, right? We've got Ripley on a like a cargo ship and she has blown a alien, a xenomorph out of the lock. I was like, she's what? Yeah. She's- that's it's disgusting. Fun. I can't even Ridley open. Scott has gone too far. That's... I saw the counselor. I yeah. don't know. Yes. Uh... Alien takes place in... Or no, sorry. Prometheus is 2093. Yeah. Alien is 2122. And this is 2142. So 20 years after So Alien. Ripley's still floating around out there. Because yeah. they, the, the company... The cryo. The, they're yeah, she's in cryo. Like, yeah. Which Burn. is a great... I love in these movies that they can put them in cryo stasis and then... We'll come back to you later. Hundreds of years later <laughs> sure. or whatever. Well, I think, in, I think the gap Makes between... Makes sense it's owned by Disney now. Correct. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they need a 20th Century That's Fox. That's exactly yeah. why. They the unlock real it, right? Right. reason for the merger <laughs> oh. has been revealed. Cryo freeze. Yes. <laughs> I, I, so I think the, the gap between Alien and Aliens is like 60, 65 years. Yeah. Because when Ripley wakes up, they're like, by the way, your kid's dead. It takes yeah, place sorry. 37 years But if it makes you feel any movie. better, The Simpsons is still on. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and guess what? They predicted everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is the first time we've actually not been on a ship. I, Alien 3, we're on, a, we're on a planet. But this is the first time we get a look at how a evil colony. how evil Waylon Yutani is yeah um they if all, he didn't if he couldn't tell I know, all the yeah. other crap right. they've Paul done. Reiser's a scumbag <laughs> like it's all of it uh, not in real life like his character <laughs> there is a weird he seems what very if very nice in real life. yeah there's a weird what if comic b- based around his character oh okay. like what if he hadn't died in alien and he goes back to it's very it was like Paul Reiser wrote the comic it was oh, very okay. strange okay <laughs> um so yeah, so the these characters like they're it sounds like they're basically indentured servants yeah. to the company and the only way they can get off planet is if they produce enough credits or like I think it's time. I think you like, serve you have 10 to work years number like, of hours. Oh, okay, okay. So she, she works enough. her numbers of hours and she's ready to leave and they're like, "Oh, we've increased the number of yeah, hours." Yeah, I've got Literally all my paperwork. Doubled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was it, it was very um Jetta, is that where Ray is when like the guy won't give her the credits? Oh, gosh, you got I think me on that one. But, but so that's Kaylee Spaney who, from Civil War, who was in yeah. Civil War. Yeah. She was great in Civil War. Yeah. That was I. I thought she well. was great in this. I I really liked yeah. her. I do too. I think she was very good. Yep. She and her, we are led to believe he's her brother, but we don't really know anything else. And then this character named Adam, no, right? Andy. Andy, thank you, is attacked by a bunch of bullies. And we see this the white synthetic blood like coming off him. And as soon as I saw the white blood, I was like, oh, no, this never ends. I well just for thought anybody. he really liked it. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> what? Do it again. What is the year 2142? Who knows yeah, how these yeah, things right, work? Right. No, we don't king shame even in 2023 or, or 21. As long as you consent. That's right. 
That's all right. That matters. All but matters. Th- this actor, I've never seen him, but he was in a Hulu show. What was the Hulu show? David, did you know he was in uh, Rye Lane, <laughs> which is a, a movie that's actually really great, uh, a Lane. really great romantic comedy that came okay. out on yeah on Hulu. On Hulu, okay, sorry, Hulu movie. Yeah. Um, this guy was so charismatic and so good at switching between the you know friendly mm-hmm. synthetic to Waylon synthetic, synthetic, and uh, I just thought he was phenomenal. I had never seen him, but instantly, like, I think he's the best part of this movie. And yeah. I wanted to go see other things he had done, so I sure. wanted to go check that out. The dad Watch jokes. Watch Lane. It's probably the best romantic comedy of the last couple of years. Okay, wow. That's okay. high praise. Okay. Um, and then his name is David Johnson. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so he was programmed by uh, our main character's dad, so he's constantly telling dad jokes, which I thought were great. Rain Carradine is Rain. her name. Just yeah, so you know. thank you. Um, You're welcome. The dad jokes, I think, were a nice little twist. I, that was great. I, I liked it. The, the dad program dad jokes, yes. like, and to keep her comfortable, and, and uh, it was wonderful. It was yeah. good. So they, and it actually uh, comes in later in the plot when she needs to, like, figure out how to get out of the whole situation. So that's nice. Yeah. 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 So. That, I got to tell you, that little plot device is pretty great yeah. when we get there. We'll get there. But, yeah. Um, so they're based, they're, they're out of luck. Like, they, there's no way they can afford to leave they're behind on their rent they're gonna whatever's gonna happen it's gonna happen do you really think a huge corporation would double your indentured sir never mind that doesn't Don't. seem like something <laughs> corporations <laughs> would do. Not very friendly corporations. corporations yeah what is this I, a uh, disney movie yeah. okay yeah. it is a disney movie oh, okay <laughs> if only they could get tax cuts they, oh, wouldn't, they wouldn't have to do, do this. this that's right, that's right. yeah that's that would do it yeah enough yeah. money they um, wouldn't double their profits. They no. would just use it all. And it, it would they would help down. out. They would help out. Oh, yeah, because we know how well that works. It would <laughs> trickle down on you like white Android like, blood. Uh, right yeah. It's great. Just spurt it's after perfect. spurt yeah. of white right Android blood. in your face. Yes. Yeah. I just want to know if M. Night Shyamalan has anything to do with these events. You know, he's around a lot of interesting... <laughs> That's a callback from last week. That David. is very much. Uh, a, yeah, right, right. He's just a lot. A lot he's of, not responsible, Kevin. When when but goes I down, said. when but goes down, M Night Shyamalan seems to be around. These We're gonna events. get a cease and desist. Where he's like, "Hey, stop <laughs> saying that." Uh, so he, she gets a call from someone who I assume is her ex boyfriend, who says, "Hey, we've got a lock." I guess we should say the very beginning of this movie is completely silent, which I was like, "That's fun," I, because they nobody ne- can hear nobody you shows the, which is yes in space, but. They never do that. There's always like a soundtrack or you hear yeah. like things bouncing off. It's just like, well, there is no, nothing. Awesome. Yeah. So I like that a lot. And we see the remnants of the Nostromo, which is the ship from the first from the first movie. Was it the Nostromo? I thought it was the ship that they were going to. No, that well, you see like bits and pieces. Oh, of that it. they're they're getting the thing mm-hmm. off of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, because okay. you see the name on the side of it. it yeah, okay. which I was like, I remember I was yeah. sitting there. I was like, oh, oh that's kind of that's, fun. But right. That's, that's what I'm saying. In these movies, you can go back you know people later on can go find things from the other movies yeah it's like tell those stories give us more in this world you don't have to keep giving us direct sequels and direct... Be, not everything has to be about ripley yeah exactly yeah. well it's the same thing we're talking about with star wars right yeah they've got they've got the same problem where it's like come on you're talking about this entire world this entire galaxy or many galaxies whatever and like you're focusing on the same people every it time it is i mean they're doing right. they're kind of doing that with the tv shows right like you're branching yeah. off to different characters. They need to do it in the movies the game, so they become yeah. mainstream. The problem yes. is people people in the movies, they go, oh, this isn't a... Or for, at least for now, they're There's like, no oh, this is, a, this is a TV show. That's not, not real, right? Right. When you put a new movie where no one even mentions Skywalker, they're going to go like, oh, real Star Wars can be not just about Skywalkers. What's well, the games? There's, there's a new one coming out that's like an open world yeah. Grand Theft Auto Star Wars game. Or make a movie about Cal because oh, he's already yeah. tied in, I guess, with the TV shows and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's I'm never so. going to watch the shows and I'm never going to play the game, so I need the movies. <laughs> yeah. I do recommend the Force Unleashed one and two, and yeah. the new but, one. But but I, uh, but but yeah, but they got to do it in the movie. So again, I like that they did this here. Give us an alien story with these new characters. Yeah, yeah. So we see the the Whalen Utani Corporation, and they they find this big rock, and they kind of bring it inside, and they cut it open. And I remember sitting there thinking, "There's no way." Like that's I. All right. It was like a fossil, right? Because it, it was a xenomorph head. It was, the, it was and... the xenomorph that Ripley shot out of the the ship. But d- did they take the alien out of it, or did they just find like a fossil of it? No, they took the alien out of it because we see him like that's the alien we see up in the rafters mm-hmm. that, that the Marines had killed. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, later. that's right, because stuff went down and they mm-hmm. find it later. Got mm-hmm. it. Okay. That's just, yeah. It's the same alien from the first movie. Wow. Um. So they say that like, look, there's this 
the boy. It had to be expensive to get him back. It was right? super expensive. Yeah, yeah. Like same this. actor. Yeah. It was same costume. It was intense. <laughs> it's a she, right? No, I think it was a. It was like a. Oh, it wasn't the queen she one? She in the second. She, one, yeah, right? the queen oh, in the second. That's, that's right. the big twist, Rooney. Yeah, and then we didn't have an internet back then, so nobody was mad about it. Oh, Mary Sue. Oh, Xenomorph. Xenomorph can't be a woman. Unbelievable. went whoa. That line in that segment was like, "These eggs got to be coming from somewhere." Well, you're right. Dude, and I gotta say too, the alien movies are interesting. That they always explore this, like how humanity is so awful and does all these terrible things. And like, of course, as humanity, we want to root for the humans. But also, it's like, who's to say the aliens aren't the heroes, right? Like, I mean, we're- well, well, <laughs> they do kind of go on unrepentant <laughs> yeah. killing spree. Yeah. When they refer to the aliens as perfect killing machines. Right. Well, like, <laughs> they maybe don't need to be killing machines, but I'm just saying, like, when you talk about nature, right, it's... it's They're not, like, a, a diplomatic <laughs> machines. <laughs> it's not like if right. you beat the predator, the predator's like, good job. Yeah. Like, you know. Kevin, I, I'm, you I'm, know? With, I'm with you, Kevin. And also, right? da- David in, this, in the prequels is also a hero, as far as I'm concerned. So. He murders <laughs> he murders Shaw. He rips her jaw off. But, I don't think you but, get to be a hero but I think, at that point. But I think, but I think the larger point is that any evolution of species... It's, like goes through this period. Yes, like, evolution. It's, not it's like, natural selection. It's not like mankind was super concerned about sure. what I mean, and you know, good forty percent of us still aren't. <laughs> but but you know, like we yeah, it's just like, well, I I need to eat. There's an animal. I'm, I'm going to eat kill it. Yeah. it and eat I'm a, it. I'm like, do I'm, it. We didn't go, yeah. oh, I'm not gonna kill this thing. So like that's what I mean is it's a really interesting exploration because us as humans, of course, we want the continuation of the species, of course. We think the humans are good guys. I'm, I'm some of them at least. Yeah. But 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 it's just like here's this other creature that exists out there and and again, like in other movies, like what did what does humanity do? Like in Avatar, it tells the same story. Another James Cameron. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you gonna do? You find them and you don't try to befriend them, you want to experiment on them and take their I I see the and, argument that like the alien, well, the, the, alien xeno- the xenomorphs yeah. are just doing what xenomorphs do. That's that's what I'm saying, right? And so who's to say when humans take them and experiment on them and go on their territory or whatever? Like they reproduce, they do their thing, right? And so again, we like the humans, we root for them. But I think these movies, and especially with Prometheus and the stuff that David's doing and all that, it's like they're trying to they're trying to create or look for the superior species. And they're like, why would the humans win? They're not the superior. Well, they're definitely not superior in, well, I guess that's true. I guess they're not superior. Uh, Sigourney Weaver in four is like an alien hybrid. hybrid. Thing, yeah. It's like, I won't get into that. Cause that <laughs> movie is insane. Uh, but Fincher directed three. Yeah. And there's a, it's it, his which, first movie. It right? is. And it's yeah. a mess. <laughs> it's not his movie. It's because he wasn't Fincher yet. He wasn't they Fincher yet. So yeah, they, they were like, well, we're not doing that. Yeah. He's like, you directed a nine inch nails video. Can yeah. you make it look like that. Just do that. Um, so, yeah. So they say that there's this uh, – they think there's a ship above uh, the atmosphere of this planet that is just completely destroyed. And if there's pods, if there's cryosleep pods on this, we can steal the pods, put them in our ship, and we'll get to wherever – Rigel should, 4. They wherever. should have put Walt Disney in one of them just like in, <laughs> like in the background. so wild. I mean, since they own – it's the same company. What if they had a guy in one of them that just it's looked so with insane. a mustache? Yeah, and, right. So, but the key to all of this is Andy, right? Like, no, they can't get onto the ship without a synthetic who is a Wayland Utani synthetic. synthetic, And he can use, he can interface with their mainframe, get the doors open and do whatever. Um, And Riley, Riley? Rain. Rain. (laughs) That was close. Uh, You're thinking of Inside I was, Out. I, right, right. That's exactly what I was <laughs> thinking Inside of. Out Alien. Show me that movie. Yeah. Dude, me, I would a, watch a, a, a Pix- CG Pixar me animated a Pixar alien. alien movie. Yes, rated R, please. <laughs> um, I wonder if someday Disney will farm out Pixar to do, a, like Mar- now that Deadpool's super rated R in the MCU, I wonder if Disney will ever farm out them for adult animation. It's, always, it's one of those things that I always wonder. I'm surprised that nobody has like just done it, like just done like a sausage party. That's yeah, true. Yes, I was going to say. But I mean, like, like CG, like more modern day. Yeah. Cause I mean, you used to have the, was it 
Ralph Bakshi. Yeah, did the, like Frank yeah. The right? So, but like with CG, you never really until Sausage Party. But I don't know. You know, Disney's all about shareholders and making more profits. If they see what Deadpool can do for MCU, I just wonder if they won't put Disney or Pixar on the name. But yeah. will they branch off and go? Oh well, this is the adult this is Touchdown, animation. Touchdown Point Two. Yeah, I guess is the, that's what this is. But anyway, so so they they get Andy. They to, go. They they agree. And they get up into we're introduced to four new characters. And when I saw these characters, I was like, hmm, uh, red shirt, red shirt, red <laughs> yeah, shirt. <right. laughs> That's where you guys are. Um, I didn't recognize any of them. I no. Were they anyone that you? No. Nope. OK. Uh, I did. Fine. I did see an interview with uh, Alvarez where he said he would ask people if they had seen like the first two alien movies. And, they'd say and no. if they say no, he's like out. Yeah. Like, nope, you can't. Oh, except oh for, I was uh, the door of the Explorer. She. uh is oh, what Homer said. That's oh, is that she's right? great. I, yeah. yeah, she. What was she just in that was really good too? Um, she was in uh, Madam Web, David's favorite movie. Oh, really? Yeah, and I love, she was I love Madam Web. She, what is happening? But <laughs> I, Isabella. Well, thanks Mer- for joining us, Dave. <laughs> yeah. uh, Isabella yeah. Mersad, who isn't was she, Dora. Isn't she Hawk Girl? Yeah, I think she was in that too. No, no, she's going to be Hawk Girl, or she's going to be right. Yeah. But so we saw her in Madam Not Web. Hawk and, to a girl. No, no, it's no that's a very different movie. <laughs> okay. But she was one of the best parts. I said it on a review of Madam Web, where she kind of felt like she knew what she was doing. She showed up to do her. Th- I, I don't know. She's charismatic, so she I has she was... one hell of a scene in this movie, boy. I tell yeah. you what, mm-hmm. dude, uh, and would do when Fetty Alvarez goes full sicko I mode. Th- I was when she. We'll I there. was like that guy in the window, and I bet David was too. Yeah. Going yes, I, please. When we get there, but <laughs> I, when you announce, when you say that Fetty Alvarez is doing a movie like this, it's like this, I knew it was coming based on the Evil Dead. Wild. Movie. How yes. many <laughs> gallons and buckets of right, blood did right. they use in that movie? Um, yeah. So they they go up in the ship, and then they realize it's not a ship. Like what they're what they have found is a spi- is a decommissioned, not working space station, uh, and they say that we've got like. 36 hours to get in there, get our stuff and get Romulus out. Romulus and Remus are the two yes. halves of the space station. Um, so they get up into the spaceship and we kind of get an interaction between one of the guys who's the jerk and Andy. And we find out that uh, a synthetic basically killed this guy's mom. Yeah. So he's got a bit of an attitude towards. Synthetics. I get it. It's fair. Yeah, it's fair. And every synthetic we've met with the exception of Bishop and Carr from two and three. Okay, so just Ash is is bad. <laughs> like always, David. Depending on how you. Okay, look so at it. David in Prometheus is bad. David in Alien Covenant. There's well, two of Walter, them. Walter, right? Oh yeah, it's Walter. Two that's different. Right. David is just the worst. David, David is the, why, but that's David, why I love him. He's but, the yeah, worst David, of them all. David yeah. is very evil. David's yeah. the one where he's the Nazi, like, basically. <laughs> yes, yeah, but I do like that. With it's that eugenics, right? Is that what? Yeah, it's exactly what it is. Okay, and David in that one's like. When they see what David becomes, they're like, "Oh, we screwed that up." But like, God, Michael Fassbender is he's awesome, great. isn't he? Though, like, he's yeah. such a charismatic dude. Like, that's why I wanted to see more David or whatever that kind of android because they should have brought him back. He's just so good. He's very. Good. I wish that they could have paid him to be in it. And he, he's responsible for the xenomorph. Like, that's right. What we find out in Covenant yeah. is that they're that's he's the reason they exist. Um, so so uh, Dora's pregnant. Dora's pregnant, and I. Initially, you know, you, you're thinking she's throwing up, and then uh, uh, you just think she's Rain, sick. And Rain then... is like, you know, no, what the hell? I thought she was instantly pregnant. Yeah, as soon as, as, soon as she was throwing she up, up, I was like, oh. conception. I was like, pregnant, pregnant. Yeah, absolutely pregnant. Yeah. And it's a Fetty Alvarez movie. I'm like, she's pregnant. But That's... the ship, I think the ship like was blasting off. I just figured that that was like zero, like gravity g forces. Like I think they play it to where it's like, oh, I that was see a... that. But I mean, they tell you immediately. Like, nobody else pregnant. was. Yeah. Up. That's true. Yeah. And yeah. She grew up a lot. Yeah. Um, and she's, you know, who's the dad? And she's like, I don't know. It's like some loser. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's one of these yeah. mothers. Yeah. It's not her brother, but I bet you it's the other guy. <laughs> I know how nerd <laughs> devices work. Yeah, right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, Do you get morning sickness on a planet with no daylight? How does that work? Yeah. I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah, yeah. You just get wow. sickness. And it's a little loophole. Yeah. I'd like to know, how do they all know how to spy, fly spaceships? Well, I think... I think they're all workers. Like, workers. Like they're if you going don't up want and... these people to leave the planet, maybe don't teach them to don't fly. Don't teach them how to fly a spaceship. That is now, true. The, I mean, I've never been an evil corporation, <laughs> but this seems like counterproductive. One oh one. Yeah, right. 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 It's mm. why they didn't teach slaves to read. Oh, God. right. I mean, I mean, it, no. You're. I hear I'm you. Just, I'm not stating facts. Not for it. Yeah. Just right, to be right. clear, but it it occurred. <laughs> right. It was mm. the logic that went into it. So like, 
if you don't want your indentured servants to leave the planet, and the fact that don't they l- teach them to fly, I did think spaceships. that was weird. Like they do leave the planet and nobody stops them. Yeah. Well, I'm guessing that again, I don't know the backstory, or maybe well, we... beca- I think I think it's because anywhere close to there is so far away. Uh, and if you don't have access to to a cryo chamber, sure. What's never the point? Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. probably why they didn't have enough although, cryo. To although fly. I would also make the argument. If I have to spend 10 years in the boredom of a spaceship or 10 years working in the salt mines yeah, right. in Dorva Van 1650. Maybe just fly off. Only for them to add another 10 years as soon as I get to 9 years and 11 months. Yeah. I'll take the spaceship. I'll take the spaceship. Yeah. yeah. Any day of the week. Uh, so, so they, they, they get dock, in. They dock in and they find the... There's nobody there, so it's it's cold and it's it, the spaceship is the the station is off. Oh yeah, I like it when they booted it up. That was cool. Yeah, and I like when you see everything kind of turn on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that's so one of my favorite. So things. much also, good sound design in this movie. It is that great is from right right from the beginning when the computers flip on and it's it sounds just sound. like the the monitors and alien. The, yeah, the sound of the pulse rifles mm-hmm. is one of the best machine gun sounds so cool. ever. Yeah, it's the best. I, I saw an interview with uh, Fide Alvarez. He said they went back and like tried to get as many of the original tapes of yes. the recordings oh, from the original. That's cool. That's a lot of fun. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So they they get into this like scientific research lab. It looks like well, they find the they find the, the the chambers, but there's not enough energy on the chambers to get them where they need mm-hmm. to go. So they realize that there's got to be another spot yeah. somewhere. They got to have a cryo heist. The cryo heist. That's right. So they get the gravity turned back on in the ship. Uh, and they go into this chamber, and as soon as they find Chekhov's uh, yeah, gravity right. purge, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh, even if it's inactive, it has to purge itself every. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing where I'm just like, okay, all on. right, all right, we'll see that later. Um, they find the like cryo fuel, and they go to pull it out, and it triggers this alarm. I thought this was a great way to ramp up the suspense. They're in the lab. We see all these little experiment things well, we kind of blurred we see, out. Well, we, we do see like in a face jar. huggers like vacuum sealed into this. Right. Thing. But you, you see stuff, but you're kind of not sure what is going on in there or whatever. And then as soon as they pull out the cryo tube, you see all these face huggers that are up on the wall and you see the temperature gauge and it gets warmer, warmer. Yeah. It turns red. It's getting critical. And they let these things out. And I, I just thought it was a great way visually to see all this stuff and how they were preserving them. Yes. And then for it to heat up. And then uh, there's it's all like water in yeah the, in like the room. Thing, I, I feel like things are like defrosting so yeah. there's water like on the floor and so now they're scurrying and swimming through the Which water is from alien them. resurrection oh is like okay. there's a there's an alien that swims in the water nice and i was like okay that's a nice little touch yeah but i do think this is the most we've seen a face hugger move oh yeah they're, they're oh, we've definitely. never seen them like stampede around we've seen a them ship jump like, out of a, an egg which was great I, I thought it was great to see them like doing their thing like like yeah like all chasing and jumping and then the fact did we know before that i haven't watched these movies in a while did we know that they are like based on heat and not based on i don't remember that is that because that's the predator i i don't remember that I know that in Ripley, alien. in the end of Alien 3, Ripley jumps into, she's got a, spoiler for Alien 3, she's got a queen in her chest, and she jumps into like a lava pit to stop the queen from being born, but I don't remember anything about a heat, like yeah. that they're attracted so it to might heat. be, uh, maybe it's in the books or comics or something, but, could be. but I thought it was interesting to see that part of it, where they're having to kind of like, again, don't breathe, it's very mm-hmm. that suspense, and mm-hmm. trying to sneak around and everything. But anyway, so they start attacking them, and uh, meanwhile, they've, uh, is, what's his face? Uh, the boyfriend? No, 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 Andy. Um, they oh, realize this is this they can't, he doesn't have the security protocols because yeah. his lab is so locked down, so she uh, takes the little chip see, out of. So we should say there's a, there's a hole in this ship, and we're just like, well, I, okay, that's acid blood. Like that's what that is. <laughs> uh, and there's like this. There's an, an android, a synthetic, face down, all boiled up, like, and he looks like Ash from the first movie. And if they had this is again, if they had just left it like that, and I because. I know. I was yeah. like, just leave it. I know. We all know who that is. I know. I really wish. But, I mean, the it, the synthetic had more to do, and so I guess they just, you know, he's throughout the movie, yeah. he's guiding them and trying to get you know get them to do his bidding he and all that. He becomes the main antagonist, basically. Yeah. Big time. Yeah, for right? sure. Yeah, he's the face of the company. Like, that's... So, anyway, he jumps up. They're able to subdue him. They get his microchip out, and so he has the security protocols. So, 
uh, she runs in to rain runs to the door. Like there's a crack in the door and she's like, put this in Andy and it will give him the protocols. So he's rebooting basically yeah. while all these little things are scurrying around and they're, and he's just frozen there. Right. Uh, and one of them jumps up, I think, and he like grabs, grabs it, it, which is like, like, Oh, oh boy. no, it's like, I know Kung Fu. <laughs> well, it's like, it's exactly right? because, because Andy had been kind of like this gentle giant. Yeah. Kind, he's kind of, of like, stuttering and like, yeah, he feel like, like he's, cause he's an older, kind of... older robot. He's got some issues. She basically, it's like an, Nintendo cartridge he takes his chip out yeah. blows on it puts it back <laughs> in and then it, it works and so but now he's grabbing these things and, and instantly and the actor like his body language he's like totally yeah he does the different. Superman thing it's great yeah. right yeah it is totally it's like the Superman transformation and so now he's like you know come with me if you want to live yeah, basically, yeah right getting them out of there Um. so while they're getting the while they're trying to get out of the here all of these face huggers are just descending upon this door uh, and Unfortunately, one of them latches on to one of the crew members of the ship, who is the, I assume, is the girlfriend of the character. Yeah. Um, and what I do, again, what I like is we, as people that have watched these movies, know. She's not Tom Holland from the movie poster. Correct. Yeah, right. Um, we know that once that thing's on you, like, game over, man. There was <laughs> Alien 2. That's what that was. Um but none of our characters know it's that. It's more subtle fan service than they're about to <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. Uh, I'm surprised that line didn't get used in this movie. It would have made more sense than the one that did than get the used. one we got. Oh, yeah. 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 Right, that was real bad. That right. is that, cringe inducing. That, 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 if, that may be that is the number one bad thing about the movie. That's fair. And the Ash lookalike is the number two because had, that line was just, the most out of place. If he had just said, get away from her yeah. Yeah. and just left it. Right. But that's an okay. Aliens line, right? That is right. an Aliens line, yeah. yeah. yeah anyway, but that was me. so freaking bad. I can't believe they didn't cut that. Like, so did, bad. They, they go, we need fan service, like two more, more. percent fan we service. We need fan service for people who haven't seen an Alien movie <laughs> since 1987. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so so they, so they the face hugger gets her and uh, they it's like they show that it's choking her. Yeah. Yeah, one, so the deal is you can't once they're once the face hugger is latched on, it provides oxygen, but it is implanting a, an alien in mm -hmm. your chest for incubation. But if you try to take it off, the the tail of the face hugger will either suffocate them, the person that they're on, or they'll break their neck and they're dead. And I did like this where they gave Rain, you give an they give you an idea of kind of how smart or resourceful she is, where she says, "Hey, why don't we try to freeze it." And it'll maybe let go or we can break it off and it won't be as bad. Yeah. So that's what they do. The face hugger lets go. And I feel like this happens very fast. And they pull that thing out for what seems like uh, for days, true, right? Yeah. That thing is Well, I mean, like even there. in the first movie, the the initial, when we see the, a character with a face hugger, the initial, like, he's, the alien doesn't pop out of his chest quickly. Yeah. Like there's a whole period Yeah, what's of time. the uh, incubation fact like i feel, uh, like, the I feel this, like the david aliens are pretty fast in prometheus it happens very fast okay. I, a and, and i'm different. not arguing it was a fun time but god the way these things grew from baby to gigantic well, no, xenomorph the, in, in alien the first one at least it does happen fast does it go that fast yeah okay because it comes out of the guy's chest yeah. and then... again it's their rules i enjoyed the movie i'm just saying like when they're like oh it's a chest burster and oh it's up in the wall and oh it's a xenomorph like yeah. i just was like what no the it, it happened i feel like it happens pretty fast because right. when he kills um harry dean stanton like it's not long after we see that yeah. thing for okay um does that seem fair david did, did you think that they uh yeah matched... it always does seem fast i mean these movies are just like quick moving just yeah. terror you know we get everybody off, you know, where they're supposed to be. We we put. We should say Andy is very much like the, you know, I mean, he's very much the Wailing Utani droid now, where he's making calculated decisions, and the Rook droid has basically reprogrammed him to yeah. have a new mission, which is to do what's ever best for the company, for the company, as opposed to what's best for Rain. And so now his goal is is to basically steal the Xenomorph. DNA, whatever. So this is experiment. very interesting because this ties into Prometheus. Mm -hmm. Like this is a like when we see David in Prometheus has like they're not in that movie. They're not eggs. Mm -hmm. Like they're like these cil like cylinder oh, pods, weren't they? The po well, that's in Covenant. Okay, but it's like this goo. It's this mm -hmm. black goo, and David takes some of that and puts it into a guy's drink just to see yeah. what it would do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I was also to oh. David our david's point we're like 
Michael Fassbender's an evil son of a oh, bitch. Yeah. He was like, oh, you know God, what? Yeah. Let's try this. Just for fun. Just for funsies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, but we do get a, a, like an alien baby in that one. And mm-hmm. Prometheus with Elizabeth Shaw has like cuts an alien out of her stomach. Mm-hmm. So we find out that, and they reference Prometheus in this, where Rook says, I've been perfecting this thing to make humans better. Mm-hmm. And he calls it like Prometheus zero point whatever. And it's all a reference to the first movie which i thought was was like wow i cannot believe we just referenced prometheus in these movies yeah it's tying everything together it's not like this is a side thing that ignores them or whatever i mean they're trying to really make all of them that's canon, what i mean when it's so. like it's this interesting combination like dr sleep was where yeah. it's like we're going to take the book the movie and we'll just tie it all together yeah um so so he's basically trying to get this experimental stuff back to to LV-242. The Whaling yutani people are doing the research. He's trying to escape with it before this thing blows up. We should also mention that it's, uh, the like, time has 40, sped, yeah. it's like 40 minutes until impact to the rings of this planet. Yeah, right. they, they're yeah. like, I thought we had 36 hours. And then Andy's like, look, this thing shifted like a half a degree. So yeah. it completely changed everything. Yeah. So we have to get out of here. So it's a race against the clock. They're trying to get this stuff back. And uh, I like, I do like this where like the girl who had the face hugger, you know, they're obviously trying to save her. And Andy's like, nope, she's no good. Like that's, that is very interesting because in the other movies, like in the first movie, when they find, I wish I could remember that character's name. Uh, the guy with the face hugger, Ripley's like, face huggy uh, McGee, they face huggy McGee. Ripley's like, well, he's not coming on the ship. Like right? he stays off the ship, and then Ash, the chief science officer, lets him on cause right because he, he wants whole, yeah. right. Um, and in is Charlie's throne in Covenant or is she in Prometheus? Just Prometheus. She says he's not coming on the ship. Yeah. He, look at his face. No way. That's Logan Marshall Green, actually. The, oh, okay. Not Tom Hardy. Not Tom Hardy. Not yeah, Tom right, Hardy. Right. And then she sets him on fire. But I I do like that there are people in these worlds who are just like. And right no so i like no. that and i like that andy's you know calculated decisions here because like he's his main objective is or directive is to do what's best for the company but he also isn't like trying to get the humans killed it's just he has to follow the prime directive and he is trying to save them in a way where where it's like oh it's either they die or all of us die kind of a thing you know what i mean like he is still trying to you know, I mean, they obviously are helping him with his goal, but it's just that he's not going like, ah, eh, whatever. Let well, them die. Well, I, I do think that when we get to the scene, spoilers, the sister's going to die. Um, when, oh, and, this is just a wicked, awesome. But it's scene. like, but it, it, you can see it both ways. You can see where uh, Rain and her boyfriend are like, get her, like, open the door, and Andy's like, nah. Now, look at that big thing behind her. Like, he's waiting yeah. for me to open that door. Like, yeah. I'm not opening that door. That's yeah, great. She gets gutted in front of them. Right, it's great. He, yeah. made, he made the right decision, he did right? Make the That's right what decision. I'm saying. And, like, I know he wants them to help him with the prime directive, but I guess he could just run off and do his thing. But, like, I just like the way that that character's played with all his calculated decisions. And it's like, well, one of them will die or three of them will die. So we got to let the one die. Which is why that guy's mom died, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, they oh, say that yeah. the, the, just, the yeah. synthetic had to make a choice Same between decision, right. 15 people or three. It's the trolley. It's the trolley. <laughs> <laughs> That's really yep. good. Um, so, yeah. So now we've got the, the pregnant, the sister pregnant girl, uh, Dora, is on the ship. And we've got the our person who's infected with the, the chest burster. Yeah. And this oh, is a such fun... a great, great scene. They have an X-ray device I that they that find earlier, awesome. so you can look through. She's looking through her arm and everything at the bones and all that. And so she uses it. She's like, "What's going on?" She puts it behind her back. And you can see her it whole moving. chest is is yeah X-rayed. Yeah. And then it all was of like a, sudden... a sci-fi version of when you put a flashlight behind your hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly yeah. right. That's exactly <laughs> but right. It looked so cool. The effects of this, yeah. and the horror, and the score ramped up, and everything was just awesome. And then, th- so normally with a chest burst, when we we've seen these chest bursters, is it's like one straight shot and this thing is out of your chest mm. this one's like nah we're gonna crack that rib cage open oh from the, the cracking ins- of yeah. the oh, from so the good. inside yeah. and it's not even and initially i thought because when those things come out when the baby xenomorphs come out they're already fully like they're moving they're moving pretty quickly this yeah. one was like a baby like when it was born it like it had to come it sat there for a second and then it took off it was like the dinosaur from jurassic park it kind of was like the dinosaur (laughs) that's exactly right that was eileen Wu as navarro well we don't have to talk about her anymore (laughs) she damn um and then i'm trying to think like now we've now we've got a xenomorph on this ship and we think 
it's just one. <laughs> and we quickly find We'd out be a mistake. we <laughs> are wrong. <laughs> so we talked about it before where uh, our Dora is being cha- – Dora is pregnant. And I th- I'm almost positive it's... K the- is her character name, if you would like to We're going to stick with Dora. Um, <laughs> like- Only because we love that movie. <laughs> that movie was that fantastic. Movie so great. good. So yeah. really is. <laughs> I'm glad she's getting a shot at like a big franchise. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's fun. So, Pecan? kid guy is the dad, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, there's no doubt that they have a moment where they're, they see each other... The ex-boyfriend, chicks dig jerks. right? Take chicks dig jerks. That's like Bill Hicks like, said it her, back. That's right. It's Rain's ex-boyfriend. No, no, no. It's, oh, it's the it's Navarro's boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. yeah. Uh, he, Bjorn doesn't that... matter because he's dead <laughs> he's next. Just, there you go. <laughs> Spike Fearn yeah, as he, Bjorn. He gone. He, uh, the he's got like this, and he dies. I think in the worst way possible. So we see like which I don't. David, have we ever seen? A cocoon like this, where the the baby xenomorph is growing into the big xenomorph. I don't remember a don't cocoon remember like it. this. I'm not sure. If anything, maybe in aliens, but I, I'm not sure though. Okay. I don't remember them growing like that. I yeah. feel like the little thing scampers away, and then all of a sudden you've got a xenomorph. Yeah, I, don't I did remember. like this where you see like the the, the shedding of kind of like skin. an old werewolf movie. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. right. who walks <laughs> behind a pillar and comes out <laughs> with yeah. a full face yeah, of like, hair. Well, now I is... kind of thought. Now I could be totally wrong. I kind of thought she took he took the electric thing and shocking it like somehow sped up the evolution. Of the... I don't think you're totally wrong. I, I thought if maybe possible. that was like giving it a jolt. If that to... didn't look like a giant vagina. Oh, I think mm-hmm. you're like, yeah, I was I'm like, giving H- birth to the HR. Alien, HR I, Giger was, he was very his, excited yes. about this. Movie. <laughs> he invented the fleshlight. <laughs> he did. That's right. <laughs> but I think that was, I mean, a, what's a fleshlight? I don't know. I don't, Nobody knows. I think yeah. that was an imagery of the thing being born. And, and oh, yeah. uh, also maybe, uh, pre what's the word? Uh, what foreshadowing of things to come? Yes. Yeah. Because so, we're going to see an alien born in a different way. Correct. Shortly. So, uh, so he shocks. He's trying to shock this the, the xenomorph and kills it, and in the acid. process, a- it gets acid all over him. This movie gets the acid blood right. Yeah, right. Because the acid blood in the other sequels is more kind of like, you know, it's flying all over the place. Ah, you in might AVP get burned Requiem, or whatever. They don't even reference the acid blood. That's crazy. Yeah. So like the you know it's kind of just like ah, watch out, you're going to get burnt. But in this one, they're like this acid is going to burn through the hole and then there's going to be a vacuum. Well, I do like that. Andy, Andy die. does say that he's like, they, they give them, they give uh rain and the other character plasma cannons, plasma rifles. And he's like, okay, we're going to shoot. Him. He's like, the f- you are like, that's going to like the blood's going to hit the floor and we are screwed. I know we mm-hmm. don't always think about these things in sci-fi movies, especially, but in movies where you're like, well, that wouldn't work with the physics and whatever. But I think it is kind of cool. They paid attention to that. To mm-hmm. where like, you can't just shoot a hole in the side of a spaceship <laughs> because of a vacuum you would all get sucked out or whatever right. the yeah. pressure like it just doesn't work like that right and so they pay attention even although the... you can crack the glass on a helmet <laughs> when you're in space i did think that too. and nothing <laughs> bad will happen yeah when the thing hits you her, just need to hurry up. Your, go quick you hurry. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and also when your ship explodes there will be flames go on continue yes yeah. well, it's that's what, just you know, alien that, that honestly that's is one of those space things that i have just had to be like let Star it, Wars. I mean, yeah, yeah you got to make deal fun of every this. movie ever. It looks cooler this way, but, but it does I, look cooler this way. But that's I, exactly. I, right. I like that they paid attention to some of it instead of just saying, "Oh no, there's yeah. none of the physics matter." It's kind of cool that yeah. they were like, "All right, don't." get a hole and we see it earlier like whenever uh the space station when the ship crashes and it creates a big vacuum and everything's like gonna fly out there and then there's another door that seals it off yeah that was kind of cool to see it was cool yeah. um so dora gets off of the one ship but now she is kind of being stalked by the xenomorph on the second ship and we've got our main she's playing alien isolation irl <laughs> she is i was yeah. like hey man be quiet like <laughs> She gets to this door, and we see our main characters are there, and Andy is there, and they're like, "Open the door, open the door, open the door." And he was like, "Nah." Andy's like, "Nope, no, no, thanks." Uh, and we think that Dora is killed. I don't. She's not. No. Right. Um. So while they're running around this entire time, but with the alien tail going through her chest and lifting was it her, her chest, up, or was it like through her? Like, well, whatever it went through, she's yeah. not dead. So, no. but I mean, but it hooking her and then like drag bring her up is just <laughs> right. a great visual. It's yeah, <laughs> and then we see so everybody's all pissed, but then we find 
basically an alien hive. Like our characters yeah. can't go a certain way. They have to go this different way. And they're walking through and they find this alien hive. And... The Rook synthetic is like guiding them at this yeah. point. And again, obviously trying to get the scientific research, for, you know, from Prometheus. And then also he's kind of guiding them, like get to this, get out, get to the ship and I'll autopilot it out of here. And you see him popping up on screens as they're right. Like yeah. a Disney ride. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, so they start walking, and of course we see all of like the the alien goop. I don't even know what you would call it. Just like this they, jizz. We, f- we f- jizz. Yes, yeah. we find out where the entire crew of this space station is, and they are in the walls, and they are dead. Which means there's a lot. More. But they were using them for breeding, right? I oh mean, yeah. They're all strung up there so that the face huggers can implant. And I took it as like they were just using them. That's to, exactly what they were doing. Yeah. 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 Which is what they always do. But then our main character... I thought it was interesting instead of like seeing them just like, I don't know, on the ground and then it, it oh, bursts sure, and dead. Sure, like sure. they've got it like very well, officially. We see that in the first Alien, like the, the cap when Ripley finds Tom Scarrett. Is there like, a whole hive like that? I there's remember. not a hive like that, but Tom Scarrett's like plastered into yeah. the wall. But I thought that was interesting to see so many. Like they had selectively oh, sure, sure, like sure. lined them all up and put them all in there. And and I had wondered, did you guys think like, was it a one and done or did they find no, a way it's... where someone could like breed over and over again? I don't think you can do that. I, I don't What's know. I just think bust out of your chest. I just thought the way they had it set up, it's like maybe they found a way to like patch them up and let them <laughs> sit there and just chest burst what over and over. What a terrible existence right? that That's, would be. Good. But that would be so sicko, right? Like to, yeah. to have, have them set up so they have to sit there and just breathe yeah, these aliens sounds terrible which is kind of what david does to elizabeth to elizabeth yeah. so, oh it is elizabeth shaw everybody goes uh we're not going that way so they turn back around and at some point they they find dora and dora is alive oh that's right they find her in the wall she's yeah. like the are the boyfriend here something her. leads them aren't there she hears face a, huggers or something's coming so they have to go yeah oh, he hears, he hears her. her he hears her and they do go that way right and then yeah. because the and then um, Andy's like she's not infected she doesn't have an alien in her chest because there's no because she has a baby well she thinks that they think that yeah. but also because there's no face hugger on the ground that next to that had oh. died so they I always figured like if you have a baby that that actually protected her because it's like you can't implant it if there's already something oh, you think in there they care? you think aliens don't care I know but I just <laughs> didn't know if like there was enough room to do all that I'll make room. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah so they at this point there's a moment where annie's like hey try this goop it'll make you feel better and it's getting close and i do like that rain's like uh no yeah we're don't do that He's very like, davidy in this yes, instance yeah yes. just try it it'll be fine what's the worst that could happen i'm gonna tell you what's the worst that could happen uh we're gonna see it's, it in about 10 minutes yeah I, this is a cool moment though i do like it when she's like she's gonna do it but she's looking at the thing and she's like yeah no this is not yeah. we're gonna hold off on right. this rain's like absolutely <laughs> yeah not. i like that uh so they i'm trying to think they end up well they get the elevator fixed right and then yeah, she sends they, they get dora up dora up they said she says get to the ship and escape or whatever we'll get to you she sends her with the prometheus research and then on the elevator as she's going up by herself she takes one out and she injects oh herself. no this is what happens hmm. uh andy ends up being like knocked down and starts having like one of his seizures mm-hmm. and rather than leaving andy behind rain's like I was going to leave him behind this time. Yeah. Like he is not, I'm not going to leave him behind yeah. now. So she sends Dora up and then boyfriend. I did not expect the boyfriend to get got, but he does. <laughs> uh, and like gets the, he, I'm trying to think he, uh, he gets the Harry Dean Stanton treatment where the little alien mouth like cracks his skull open. Yeah. And it, was... it kills him that way. Yeah. Um, so rain goes back down. She goes to reboot. Andy and in the process takes the uh, the old uh, rook chip out and he goes back to being mm. regular Andy. Do they? Oh, this well, is the, now this, there's this, an anti. The, this is the scene where we've got all of the xenomorphs are coming yeah. at them. This is a really cool anti gravity acid blood scene. So right. So they're all. So they've got the gun and then she realizes, oh well, if we turn the gravity off, then the blood won't come at us right. and it will just float well, around. It won't even come at us. It won't hit the ground. Right. It won't. So 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 she's just sh- mowing them just, down. Mm, yes. The colonial marines 
whatever phaser pulse rifle is like it has auto aim yeah they show you earlier and so the xenomorphs are coming at him she's just mowing them all down and then the blood is like floating at them slowly it's a, it's a nice little video game thing yeah, yeah. just kind of like maneuvering yeah. out of the out of the it's way crash of the bandicoot <laughs> kind of yeah <laughs> Go right. I, I was so thinking like, uh teenage mutant ninja turtles the nes game you're not wrong <laughs> that's a great that's a great <laughs> reference that's a fantastic reference that's funny so they get back to the elevator because of the gravity purge like all of the it's going to turn on like they have yeah. to get out of the way and of course it turns on and all of the acid blood drops and they narrowly avoid it, but they get into the elevator yeah, shaft. Yeah, yeah. But gravity turns on, which means there's an elevator coming down. Right. And so Andy's up there, and he actually catches it. That was kind of cool. But uh, but rain falls when the gravity turns on. She can't get to him in time. But an, a xenomorph catches her. Yeah. Like, saves her. And then, so gravity turns back off, and of course, and then, rain grabs the pulse rifle Andy grabs the pulse rifle sorry yeah Andy grabs the pulse rifle and jumps down and, and then says one of the best lines of the second <laughs> of movie. the movie on opposite day yeah and it, it's a cool scene because he's just basically like oh it's a great stopping scene. on the on the on the xenomorph when shooting, I get this movie I'm gonna edit face. that that line out yeah. I think yeah. and it'll just be perfect. Uh, and if, stay away from her you bitch <laughs> yeah, it's like, it was oh God, I, I I died for a second in my seat, and I, I was had to like, reboot. "You were so close." I had to you reboot. Were so close. Like, why did you do that? Why? Who thought that was cool? Who? Who yeah. watched that and All, went? Yeah. That was you awesome. Know, I mean, you could have even done the game over line. Like game over could have like the guy there. is so so good in this movie, but like that delivery of the line. Yeah, I bet you could have used that line and said it better. I just don't know why that reading made it into the final I, well, cut. Well, I think he was trying to do it in a way that oh, wasn't just. He was a, not cool guy. like he was trying to undersell it yeah. like it's because it's so mm-hmm. i think he was thought it was dumb and instead of trying to like really steer into it the way the line was in the original you know what happens when lightning yeah. hits a toad <laughs> the same thing as everything else yeah the same thing as everything else <laughs> i think he was trying to undersell it because it was kind of he knew it was crazy. but you know what sure, sure, i sure. do if you look at it from the fact that andy also the non whalen takeover andy um he is like kind of stuttering and kind of yeah. i guess the way he delivers it is kind of stay away from her you bitch like he was trying to not just understate it but like in his stammering kind of way but i think he just... was trying i think the character was probably trying to be funny yeah because I... that's what he does like he's he's constantly using humor as like but it's was, bad but was he an alien too in the future <laughs> how does he know that line yeah, right. why did he say yeah. that it's so dumb it's so dumb yeah david did you like that line or do you think it was dumb i well, mean if he it, liked it, that call, line he's not gonna admit it now just... <laughs> <laughs> they're so unnecessary. That's what yeah. that yeah. it comes down to. I, I think I think the callbacks are fine, right? Like I think when they don't wink at the camera, seeing right? the Nostromo destruction is fine. Seeing uh, the Ash Android Rook is fine, for the most part, except for the face. Uh, but that line itself, where I was like, God damn it! Like I know. you almost had you were it. so close. Yeah, yeah, you were so close. So they get back up to the they get back up to the ship and they think they're okay and. They put the Dora into stasis, and just as they they put, they got less people now, so the cryo will last longer. I guess stuff. right. There's plenty of stuff. <laughs> just as Rain is about to climb in her pod, uh, Dora's pod goes off, pops open. It says, well, "No, like it's instability yeah, or whatever." Yeah, she, she pulls it. She pulls the pod out, and of course now Dora is pregnant and like pregnant yeah and in typical this is the fetty alvarez that i've been waiting for yes <laughs> put the sicko guy outside that's the window ex- yeah, that's <laughs> exactly right i was just like what i go wow they're doing it well i did i remember <laughs> thinking what are they gonna do what is this gonna be because yeah. i have no idea yeah. and she gives birth to this pod which is like it's like an acid pod. acid pod yeah and we see the face of a baby and the only this has happened twice in Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. Oh boy! When Malik F- Malik Pfeiffer is that who that is? Mackay Pfeiffer. Mackay Pfeiffer. Um, There's no Mackay Pfeiffer. Yeah. That's, I was trying to think of that line from that song. Yeah, from uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And his girlfriend gets bit, right? And she's pregnant, and she gives birth to a zombie baby, mm-hmm. and they shoot a zombie baby in the face. Yeah. Uh, this was one of that's one of the few times I was like. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And in this scene, I was like, Jesus Christ. I cannot <laughs> believe what's happening. So, okay. I need to hear your guys' interpretations. And David's already done a show and he's probably looked into this or thought about it more. But my thought was that didn't that baby look like an engineer? It absolutely was an engineer. 
because it was if, an if engineer, Prometheus en- is in the beginning, xenomorph hybrid, and the and the engineers are the ones that their DNA created this perfect being, the xenomorph, mm-hmm. and now we're researching the Prometheus stuff, which would come from engineers, which mm-hmm. would come from xenomorphs, and we're combining it with a human. You mm-hmm. would be making an engineer hybrid, right? It's exactly the face of that creature looked like an engineer. Was an engineer. That's what I thought, and yep. so, yeah, I was uh, talking to Matt Reedy, and uh, he didn't get that at all from it, and he goes, "Why did they make it look like?" Like, what did he say? He used, he said it looked like a blah 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 whatever it was, and I go, I think it's supposed to look like an engineer because from Prometheus. And he goes, Oh my god, if they did that, because he hates Prometheus. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's what they did. That's exactly what they okay. did. Okay, I didn't hundred percent been... that. And and okay. it's funny actually. Uh, There's an interview with Fide Alvarez, and he was saying uh, he was so focused on making that connection to the engineers that he actually missed the the thought that he was kind of doing the end of resurrection over again. oh he absolutely it, it, is oh, absolutely yeah, realize it. Is. he didn't realize it until the premiere his son mentions it to him hey this is just like the end of resurrection <laughs> he was like oh wow yeah you're right i didn't even realize the, that the end of okay. resurrection is there's a human alien hybrid yeah that has like human features and has like a connection to Ripley. I remember yeah. that now, and I had totally forgotten. It's I haven't watched that since VHS. Honestly, it that one is one of the most uh, like that movie's trash. Yeah, but like the end of that movie when it's getting sucked out of an air yeah. hole and has like a scream of a baby, oh, and yeah. you're like, what? Eh, what? Why? <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, I love Prometheus. Like I mentioned before, I love that movie, and so I thought the tie-in was super cool, and it made perfect yeah. sense. If the engineers created the xenomorphs, and they're doing the research on the xenomorphs, and the engineers were kind of human-like, and you combine the two things, it's like you're gonna get... Yep. Uh, yeah, the DNA is in there. Well, you yeah. got like a, hu- a, a human engineer xenomorph hybrid yeah right and so i thought it was a great callback to tie everything together and man was that a creepy looking mofo it was that not thing, if fun to look at that thing was <laughs> bizarre and again man as soon as she's whelping that thing out i'm just like yep <laughs> what do you think about pro-life now <laughs> Back your forward, aren't you yeah this is this is where you're at but it's like it's also i think of um Cronenberg's The Fly, mm-hmm. like yeah. when she, I guess, the, the Fly or The Fly Two, when she gives birth to like that, that larva. They Cronenberg direct The Fly, fly two? two, is it? Yeah, I think because that's that is Gina Davis. So I don't think they would have got. Did they get her back for the two? No, I don't think the I thought I don't I don't think there's a birth in the first one. Is there? That the birth was in, it was like the opening scene of the second one, maybe. But either way, The Fly Two is directed by Chris Wallace. Yeah, Cronenberg directed the first one. Yeah. yeah. But the, like I think that maybe it's a maybe it's a nightmare sequence. Oh, that could be. Maybe there is a nightmare sequence. Yeah. Yeah. She I does think give now that you say a, that I, I there think is, you're right. The yeah. sun is in the second movie, and that yeah. movie's even crazier. You know who produced that movie? Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, which I think is just even didn't he produce the elephant man? Yeah, also, yeah. yeah. And he like buried his name because he didn't Smart. Want to think it yeah. was gonna be funny. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not funny. Yeah. Neither one of those movies are funny no. at all. We like to give Matt Reedy little yeah, plugs. Sure. You know, I didn't care much for the baby hybrid at the end. It reminded me of the one in Alien Resurrection, mm-hmm. but I guess he wanted to do something different than the same xenomorph all the time. Also, it looked like Voldemort. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what it was. And I said, and I said, I think it was supposed to look like one of the engineers, right? It all came back full circle. I took this as his way of paying homage to Prometheus. He said, "Oh yuck! I hope that wasn't the intent." <laughs> that absolutely was the <laughs> Which, intent. One hundred percent. He hates Prometheus, and so I'm like, "No, that's cool. They tied it in." Yeah. So anyway, now this. This crazy Not, thing is chasing her down. Well, now we're kind of her. doing the end of Alien. Like that's kind of what we're doing here. Yeah. Um, where she's got to outsmart this thing. She ends up getting it knocked. She knocks it out of the of the spaceship because there's like a cargo container. Um, oh she, yeah, the thing. The thing is like the computer's like, oh, the cargo was damaged, dislodged, or yeah. release the cargo drop. And they, she's having a, you know. It's base. It is the ending of Alien. Doesn't she uh, kick over its acid pod or something? Yeah. Right? So she yeah. Um, she unhooks like she unhooks the uh, the cargo container and the the xenomorph thing. I'm a, I don't even know what they call it. Do they have a name for it? Uh, Wikipedia says the human xenomorph hybrid. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> the human hybrid. The humorph. The humorph. <laughs> <laughs> Trademark that. Thank you very much. No, I don't think that's worth it, Joe. Oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so she ends up winning. Like, she knocks it, the thing. Uh, the the space station explodes. It kills Kay, though, who's Dora, right? Uh, yes. Well, that was a weird scene. Did you, you, you think it was going to breastfeed? 
I when she know. reaches down and has oh, the goo on yes, her chest, yes, yes, yeah, yes, and yes. then the baby is like going up to her chest. <laughs> I was I'm like, they're going to grapes or wrath it. I think she was breastfeeding. I think that baby that it was breast. Yeah, but I'm like. Yeah. I thought they were going to show it. I really did. When when and he went the, full sicko mode, I'm like, <laughs> with Fetty Alvarez at this point, you're like, maybe yeah. what, turkey baster, right? Like, it's possible. I don't even Could know. Happen. You know. Uh, so, and that's kind of how this one ends. Is the the she Andy Andy it. Andy and Ray Rain kind of kill the the xenomorph and float off into wherever they're going to go, and that's how this ends. Yeah. Uh, I like given. Alien Three, Alien Resurrection, AVP, like all of these Alien other movies, like it's it is hard to follow up two of the greatest like sci-fi. Isn't there action. an Ash versus Alien versus Predator comic? No, there is Superman and Batman versus Alien versus Predator. There, isn't there an Ash versus maybe it's Ash versus Freddy versus? Je- there there is Ash versus Freddy versus Jason, okay. which was going to be a thing. Like yeah. that was going to be a movie. Jason was going to be a deadite. Okay, and that's what the gotcha. whole that's what that was going to be. Uh, the Book of the Dead is in. Jason goes to hell. Oh, nice. That's, yeah. that's yep. pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think like it, it's insanely hard. You've got Alien, which is a sci-fi horror flick that is one of the best ever. Then you've got Aliens, which is a completely different movie. Uh, that's one of the greatest sci-fi action movies of all time. Yeah. Had that dollar sign on the end. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it is funny at the draft house. Man. <laughs> <laughs> they did show commercials for aliens toys oh so they showed something they did well when that's, i when i go they that's show fun things. when i go they show that's things. fun uh, <laughs> but it is we we've talked about this before of like toy tie-ins to like these hard r oh yeah right, right? Uh, yeah right kids and I was toys like, out of every there's rated a ripley r, and there's a predator and there's, terminator whatever, right yeah. and i was like of course i forgot about the uh but then they showed a, a commercial for a xenomorph action figure that was based on the night on the first one. Does that ring a bell? Do you remember that at all? Mm-hmm. I remember seeing action figures like that, but like not when the movie was out. But yeah, this mo- was like the more co- like it was like a for thing. collectors years later. Oh no, this was like a commercial set in the seven, like it was made in the seventies. Okay, that's fun. That was like a giant xenomorph, and I was like, I bet kids want to play with like, that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. The perfect um, organism. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> now, now you can take it home. It's the perfect yeah. toy. Uh, yeah, I think this is like my third favorite. I think this movie is really fun. I think it, you know, it does play the greatest hits, but I think the effects are really good. The score is really good. The tension, the the actors. I mean, this movie was a really fun time. I wish it had a little more to say. That's why I wish Ridley Scott could finish his trilogy. You know, like all the Wasn't alien. Wasn't Neil Blomkamp going to do something? He was going to do an alien yeah. movie, but you know, Ridley Scott with each of these movies ha- has a lot to say about humanity, and it's it's just really interesting. And I think this movie, instead of trying to say something new, again, played the greatest hits and it yeah. was really fun to watch. But I just wish there was a little more to it. Um, and hopefully maybe he'll get to finish that someday. So. But I don't think I mean, not now. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. David, yeah. what, are, what are your final thoughts on this one? I mean, my big I mean, I echo a lot of what you just said there, Kevin, I, especially the score is so damn good. And this yeah. one of my favorite scores of the Who year was but, that um, Brian. What was the composer's name? Uh, Benjamin Walfish. Benjamin. Did, yeah. Incredible job here. But um, you did. I, I think, you know, we, we obviously have been complaining about a few of these like callback lines and stuff like that. And I feel like people are so latched on to those as if this movie is just wall to wall. Nothing but that. I agree. Oh, yeah. I, that, I, it's crazy I'm right there me. with you. It's crazy. There's so much fun to be had here. Yeah. There's, there's great action, incredible set pieces. It looks beautiful. Um, incredible. I, to, to say that it's nothing but those things, I just think is just uh, ignoring it on purpose. Yeah, I, I agree. I think people are being a little harsh that are trying to act like, oh, this movie's so better. I mean, if you don't enjoy it, that's one thing. But there is a lot of really, I mean, great set I, design, I, great stuff to look at. I thought at. the first 30 minutes were kind of a snooze. I, uh, but, but the first one, 30 minutes of Alien is super yeah. slow. But once they got, got to yeah. the ship and things started going wrong, I, like I was like, this is fun. It like, never let that let go. It just, it just yeah. keeps going. And yeah. yeah, I agree with you, David. I, I think the, the the cringiest is the line. Yeah, it you is. Know, I'm okay with right. seeing the, the, the wreckage of the Nostromo. I'm okay with seeing Ash. Well, because the rest of it wasn't really fan service. It's like you're a, sequ- you're a sequel 
Yeah. And Interquel is what they're calling this. Oh. A sequel that takes place. You know, with... Disney's like, that's ours. Thank you. Well, well I mean, in between Quill. <laughs> yeah. Because like, uh, like Rogue One is an Interquel. That's true. Right. Yeah. That's true. It is. So, that's that's so good. I'm yeah. Watch that. But then there's Intraquils. What's that? Which is a sequel that takes place within the timeline of a movie. Oh. So like, oh, I'm still waiting think... for a Cloverfield one of those. They're yeah, supposed I... to uh, oh. show it from a different point of view. Yeah, yeah. like the only thing oh, I can think oh, of is oh. like Timon like, and Pumbaa and like, Lion King, yeah, one, King <laughs> one and a half, Bambi two, sure, uh, Thumper, Bambi Revenge. two, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, oh, I like that was pretty good. The Legend That's... of Thumper's Gold. The, yeah, Legend of Thumper's Gold. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so but but yeah, I but yeah, like I don't consider that that other stuff fan service because it's like, well, yes. We're we're making a Star Wars movie. We're going to see the Millennium Falcon or right. whatever, right? right? Like right. that's not fan service. You know but... what? <laughs> Who's twentieth century studios owned by? Exactly. I think if you get all the negative stuff is people that no matter what will never give anything a chance that's owned by Disney. Yeah. I'm not right. saying all of it. Yep. There's people out there, but we you gotta realize you have to fight through so much noise now because the loudest people online are the people that have these agendas and will fight and, and trash everything without ever seeing it, without ever giving it a chance. And so I think you also have to comb through a lot of the crap, sift through a lot of the crap to get to real reviews. And if and if you didn't like the movie, again, no big deal. But people that are being that nitpicky about sure, it. Sure, sure, sure. Are trying to just, you know, down every single thing I, about and the I, movie. And I think that this fran- this franchise as a whole is full of God. This is one of the best sequels. Yeah, in I, the there's, Alien like series. there's there's so... where do you put it, David? I didn't see your ranking on this one. Did I? I... So I. I straight up say there are no bad Alien movies. I know okay. everybody hates Alien 3 and Resurrection. There's no bad Alien movies as far as I'm concerned. This is second from the bottom for me. Wow. I, 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 I really liked it, but um, I really but, like but all of them. You like so. AVP, an AVP movie better than this? I, do, I don't count those. I do not count oh, those. I only okay. count the, the straight up Alien ones. Well, so. that makes it a little different yeah. then. So yeah. wait, Resurrection on... is on the bottom. I mean, oh. how could it not be? You know? No, you're not wrong. Okay. So, so yeah, I'm, but if there's I'm, no bad ones, then yeah. that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> hey, I, I think... Am Covenant is number one, so I'm but insane. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's I don't why... even know how, like... That's great. That's I love having people <laughs> I'm on I'm starting the... to wonder if this episode will ever air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, like, there's, the, again, there's the games, that, which has their own mythologies. There's the comics, which has oh, their own so stuff. Much, there's yeah. so much... Like it's 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 a world that is it's like the extended universe. It's exactly of, you know? what it is. But and it was fun. This is if you like Alien, the original movies, this feels the closest. I think even closer to the Prometheus stuff than Ridley Scott himself making sequels. Yeah, I don't disagree. This feels like Alien. Yeah, yeah. To me, yeah. I yeah. think they do. so. If you like Alien and the older stuff, this is the movie that's going to sprinkle in a little tie-ins. But this yeah. is a straight up Alien sequel. You and know? one of those sprinkles is like when somebody unscrews the lid of a salt shaker and it just all dumps in <laughs> yeah. dumps out yeah. once. Oh, there's one moment like yeah. that yeah, yeah. but other than but, you can just suffer through that other than that <laughs> so you just take the salt shaker when you're done throw it over your shoulder hit sea bass <laughs> yeah, right. and yeah. just go on with your kick day. his ass yeah. Bass. yeah so anyway i guess that's it for this one let's go around the table and everyone can say where to find them. this is joe you can follow me on the twitter at joey butts b-u-t-t-s 21 and on letterbox at the same this is kevin follow me on twitter at kevin r bracket and david where can they find you and your wares uh, you can find Piecing It Together on all the podcast apps. Follow me on social media at Piecing Pod. Check out our Alien Romulus live episode. And check out the Popcorn and Puzzle Pieces Facebook group. Awesome. And uh, this is Tom. You can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. So uh, also don't forget our Patreon at Patreon.com slash Real Spoiler. So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, O'Neill hacked Shepard's communication system. Get ready for a spoiler Won't say it twice Cause we always